Hey guys, I'm finally back over there. Oh, for now. Alright, so I'd like to welcome everyone. So, our next speaker is Imam Hatim Karacha. He's the Imam at the Islamic Center of Bloomington Normal in Bloomington, Illinois. As the Imam, he has been involved with many events, including weekday Quran, Hadith, Center classes. He studied for five or six years in the Imam and uh, he, a short time ago, uh, Imam Karacha went to Hajj and brought back a lot of experiences with him to share with his community. And he also is going to start an online Cordoba class in the future. And Alhamdulillah, he has graciously agreed to come here and give and speak for us. So, Sakhar, come. Can we do it here? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you guys can hear me. Uh, I was telling one of the brothers, uh, my family is hiding over there, I think, in the corner. You guys called me out in the middle of nowhere, so I brought my posse with me. I thought, you know, if uh, something happens, I had some backup. I was born in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And, uh, I'm from Michigan, yeah. I, I mean, I work in Dothan, Illinois, but I'm from Michigan, and that's how we roll. So, anyways, uh, I'm here today, inshallah, tomorrow morning we'll be here too. And, uh, inshallah, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, we got through the snow, we got through the thing, we got here all right, and in one piece. So I know this is the last session, so I don't want to bore you to death and I don't want to put you to sleep because you guys have your own beds to sleep in. So inshallah I'm going to try to let you go, guys go as quickly as possible. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa al-Aqibatu lil Muttaqeen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma abad. <تصفيق> فقد قال الله تعالى في قرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة لا تبديل لكلمات الله ذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العظيم Many times when we hear the word wali, wali, this is a word that comes from wala yali, wilayatan, wali yan. It comes from, it has two different meanings actually. One of the meanings is to be close to someone, like a close friend or a close relative. Hence we have the meaning of guardian, like a guardian of a woman, a guardian, like that. <clears throat> the other meaning is to be a close friend, a close really bosom friend, uh, like your, your best buddy. And that is what this Quran, this ayat, the ayat in Surah Al Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah ta'ala. When we hear the friends of Allah, we think that this is something, this martaba, this is a station that is too high, too above, uh, it's far beyond us, we're hard to reach it, we cannot ever become the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is for those you know, the, the, the guys who just, you know, leave the dunya and go out to some cave somewhere and just sit there and do the ibadah of Allah SWT. But that is not the case. Allah SWT tells us in this ayah, that Allah inna awliya Allah. That verily, the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa la yahzanun. That they will not have any fear on them, nor will they grieve. Meaning that, this is talking about the day when they die, or the day when they stand on the day of resurrection in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they will not have any hope on them, they will not have any fear of what's going to happen next. While the, the, the mankind will stand there in front of Allah and be fearful, and what will be the future, what will come of them, these awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, they will not be afraid. hum yahzanun, And they will not have any grief. Meaning they will not have grief for what they left behind or all the, the life that they left behind because they know that they are going to enter Jannah and they have the Bushra and they will go to Jannah and they're happy with this and they're pleased with this. 
Allah SWT says in the next ayah, <coughs> after this, الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Who are these awliya? Who are these friends of Allah? They are the ones, they are the ones that believed, وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ And they used to have fear of Allah SWT. Taqwa, taqwa, you guys probably heard this term many times. It means to fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Rasulullah Sallallahu once when he was sitting with the Sahaba, he recited this verse. So one of the Sahabi, he got up, he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, lana. Meaning, uh, give us the description, describe them for us. So maybe that we can come to love them. We will love this uh, awliya of Allah, the, the, the friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So explain and tell us who are these people. Man awliya Allah. So Rasulullah he responded, said, "Alladina ida ida ru'u dhukir Allah," meaning that they are the ones that when you see them, when you look at their faces, you remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now we look at our friends, we look at ourselves, look in the mirror. Are we having the faces, or do we have the lives of what the Rasulullah had, or what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wants us to have? We have to look, each of us have to look and reflect and think, are we going up to this uh, awliya, what the awliya do? Many times in our gatherings, there is some person, you know, you have the joker, for, the, for example, the one who always tells jokes. Whenever you just look at him, you start smiling automatically because you know he's about to do something that cracks you up. Then you have, for example, this is not, you guys are young guys, but, um, you know, I remember when we, when we used to go, when we were small and we used to go to dinners, uh, with our parents, my father and his friends, they would be sitting there and they would talk about politics all night. And we'd be sitting there bored to death, but uh, you know, that's what it is. But the thing is, there's some people, they like politics, so that's all they talk about. When you see them, you know, oh God, come on, he's going to be talking about some kind of politics. We've got to get away from this guy. Now, there's somebody else, he talks about money all the time. He likes, he likes money. He's a businessman. He's always talking about tijara, talks about different ways of trying to make that money. So when you see him, you remember something about that. But awliya of Allah, they are different. They're the ones that when you see them, when you look to their faces, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they are the ones that they do not leave a gathering in which they do not mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. They do not stop from talking from Allah ta'ala about Allah ta'ala and His Rasul sallallahu And they keep on explaining and talking about this over and over until when you see him from far away, you get this feeling that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala automatically. So we have to look at to ourselves and we have to look at what are our friends, what are our relatives, when they see us, what do they see? Do they see a practical joker? Do they see, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with becoming a joker and doing actually uh, some of the sahaba, some of them, they would do jokes on each other. Actually one of the um, sahabi, he was with Abu Bakr and with another Sahabi. They were on, uh, they were on a, uh, on a, on a suffer, on a, tra a journey, and uh, they stopped in this area. And Abu Bakr and he went out to the city to do something. And the two who were remaining inside were sitting there. One of them was really hungry, and the other one was cooking the food. So he told him, he said, you know what? Give me some food. Let me, let me eat. I'm hungry. So he said, no, no, no. Until our Amir, until our leader Abu Bakr and comes back, I cannot give you any food. So what he did, he goes, you know what, this guy, I'm, I'm starving here, this guy's not giving me any money. So he decided I want to play a practical joke on this guy. So what he did was he, he quietly got up, he went out to the city, and he told the, he went out to the market, and he tells the people, hey guys, who of you wants to buy a slave of mine for a really cheap price? But one, there's one catch, there's one catch. This slave of mine, he, did not, he does not want to admit that he's a slave. So when you go to capture him, when you go to grab him, he's going to keep on screaming out, I'm, I'm a free man, I'm a free man. He's not going to admit that he's a slave. So he took these, a bunch of people came, and this Sahabi was there cooking the food, and just sitting there, and a bunch of guys come. And this Sahabi, and he goes, there he is, that's him. So they all pounce on him, they grab him, and they're like tying him up, and he's screaming out, why are you grabbing me, why are you grabbing me? I'm a free man, why are you grabbing me? And they go, no, 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 we know your tricks, we know what you're going to say. So we're gonna, they took him, and they took him out to the thing. <clears throat> he said, Abu Bakr al when he came back, he asked, he goes, where is that Sahabi go? <laughs> and he said, uh, well, you know, he, he wasn't giving me food, so this will happen. <laughs> so they went out, and they, go, they went and got the Sahabi back. They told him that, you know, I'm sorry, we were just joking, and this and that. They got him back, and they, and they left. 
So when they went to the, back to the Prophet ﷺ, they told the Sahaba, they told the Prophet ﷺ about this, and they all laughed, and they all laughed it off, and they were joking about it. And that. So the thing is, that even the Sahaba, they played tricks on each other. They would make jokes, and they would do this. And so it wasn't a, it's not necessary to become a wali of Allah, a friend of Allah, and just have a straight face. Just be the guy who sits in the corner, doesn't like to laugh, does not, does not like to smile, does not like to you know, even hear a joke. We as Muslims, we have to have a full, the full Muslim personality, meaning that when it's time to pray, we pray. When it's time to uh, make jokes and have entertainment, it's time to do that. <clears throat> Another time Rasulullah was sitting with the Sahaba and uh, he was talking and he was talking about the awliya of Allah. He recited this ayah and he said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa min ibadin la ibadan yaghbatuhum al-anbiya wa shuhada That verily from the slaves of Allah there are slaves. That even the anbiya, the prophets and the messengers and the shuhada meaning the martyrs on the day of judgment they will look to them in awe, and they will look at them and say, Masha, look at their, look at their station. They will look at them in, uh, in awe. So the, the Sahaba, they were curious. They wanted to know, who are these people? They said, Qila man hum ya Rasulullah. Who are these people, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? la nuhibbu so that we can love these people. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered them saying, Hum qawmun tahabu fillah min ghayri amwalim wala ansab. That they are a people <clears throat> that they love each other for Allah. They love each other for Allah's sake. Min ghayri amwal wala ansab. Meaning without any money relations between each other and without any uh, uh, family relations between each other. So just like this, mashallah, you guys have all gathered here. And all of you guys, some from Michigan, some from, I don't know, maybe uh, Indiana, I guess, and some from uh, Ohio. And I'm going to give a shout out to all of you. So anyway, it's from these different places. So you guys all came here not to do some business, not because you guys are relatives, I want to visit my relative, but you came here, you came here for the sake of Allah. You came here to learn, and you came for the sake of Allah, and the sake of Allah only. So inshallah ta'ala, may Allah make us one of those who are the awliya of Allah who will be on the day of judgment like that. Then Rasulullah he went on to say, وَجُوهُمْ نُورًا عَلَى مَنَابِرَ مِن نور. That their faces, their faces are nur. They have that uh, uh, that light and uh, and uh, their fresh faces. That and they will be sitting on the nur, on the manabir of nur, meaning thrones of nur, thrones of light on the day of judgment. <clears throat> then he said after that, la yakhafuna ida khaf al nas. That they will not fear when the people will fear. Meaning that on the day of judgment, when everybody will be afraid of what will happen next. Afraid of their fate, afraid of Jahannam, because Jahannam will be coming to them in front of them, and they will see the fire in front of them. They will be afraid, but these awliya of Allah, they will be, they will not have any uh, fear, and they will be sitting on the manabira min nur, on the thrones of nur, and they will be having fun and laughing and joking with each other. Wala yahzanun ida hazin al nas, and when the people are grieved and sorrow for what they left behind for all the time that they wasted. In the dunya, not praying, not doing the ibadah, doing sins. These awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, they will not have any grief. They will be uh, also rejoicing and having fun at that time. Thumma qara, then he recited this ayah. Ala inna awliya Allah la khufun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. The second ayah. So the second ayah of these three ayahs that I recited in the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lahum al bushra fil hayat al dunya wa fil akhirah. That for them are the bushra, are the, are, is the glad tidings in fil hayat al dunya, in the hayat of this dunya, wa fil akhirah, and in the, in the akhirah, in the hereafter. <coughs> There's a hadith uh, related by Imam Ahmed, rahimullah, in his musnad, an abadah ibn Samir ibn Ta'an, annahu sala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal, so yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, arayta qawla, qawla Allah ta'ala, the, what do you think about this ayah? Lahum al bushra fil hayat al dunya wa fil akhira. Meaning, what is the what is the meaning of this ayah? Fakala sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered by saying, "Laqad saaltani an shayin ma saalani anhu ahad min ummati aw ahad min qabla." Meaning that you have you have asked me a question that no one has asked me before you, 
or no one from my ummah has asked before this. Qala tilka ru'ya as-saliha that the bushra, the glad tidings, is the ru'ya uh, saliha, meaning the, the, the righteous dream. Jaraha al-rajulu as-salih, that the righteous person sees about himself. Autura lahu, or someone sees for him. Meaning that either the person who is pious, who is righteous, who is a friend of Allah, he gets a sign in this dunya by seeing a nice dream, a righteous dream, and he gets a sign that he is one of those close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the other uh, is that, that, uh, that someone sees the dream on his behalf. We see that Imam Bukhari, rahimullah, you guys probably all have heard of him, everybody, uh, most, every Muslim household probably has Sahih Bukhari in his house and probably heard of his name. Imam Bukhari, rahimullah, was a great scholar of the past. <clears throat> when he passed away, the day he was passing away, someone in another city, in a different city, he did not know he was passing away or anything. He saw a dream. He saw a dream that Rasulullah and some of his ashab, ashab Rasulullah and some of the companions were standing in wait, like they were waiting to greet someone, to welcome someone. So he asked Rasulullah who are you waiting for? What are you guys doing here? What are you guys waiting for? So he said, we are waiting for Nantadir Hadha Rajul. We are waiting for this, for this man, a meaning Imam Bukhari Rahimullah. And then that person, when he woke up, he found out in the next couple of days that that same night he saw the dream that Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, had in fact passed away on that night. So this is a bushra, this is the glad tiding that someone sees in this dunya. We also see the story of Bilal, al, uh, Ibn, Ibn, Bilal ibn Rabah, one of the Jalil uh, Sahabi, one of the great companions, the one who was the Mu'adhin of Rasulullah the one who used to give the Adhan uh, for, the, for the Prophet in Medina Manawara. The one who uh, was dragged in the streets of Makkah Makarma and he kept on saying, Ahad, Ahad, there is no God but Allah. And also that Rasulullah has said that there are three or five, there's a different way, that they, uh, that they love to go to Jannah and the Jannah yashtaqu ilayhim, meaning that the Jannah wants them to come in. The, they want to go to Jannah, they want to enter Jannah, and Jannah wants them to come into Jannah. And these, one of them was Bilal Rintaran. So he was given the glad tidings even in dunya. One time it's in Sahih ibn Habban. <coughs> There's a hadith an Abdullah ibn Burida an Abihi Rintaran. Anna Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم samiya khash khashatan. Amamahu faqala man hada. So Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم many times he saw in his dream or in a waking state he visited Jannah. He had a journey to Jannah. So one of these times Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he was in Jannah and he heard khash khashatan. This is the, the you know the, the sound that your sandals or your feet make when you walk. That sound he heard the sound in front of him in Jannah. So he asked Manhala, he asked the angels, who is this person? What is this sound? What is this footsteps I'm hearing? So they call they respond, This is Bilal. This is Bilal al Taran. So Rasulullah sallallahu when the next day he was sitting in the gathering, sitting in Masjid al Nabawi. With the, uh, with, the ashab, with the Sahaba, he was sitting there and he saw Bilal al was one of them, he was sitting there. For Akbarahu, he told Bilal al that I heard that I heard your footsteps in Jannah in front of me. So then he asked him, Bima sabaktani ila Jannah, that what has made you go in front of me in Jannah, that you were walking in front of me in Jannah. Faqala. So Bilal al he responded by saying, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ma ahdathu illa tawadda that I did not break my wudu except that I did wudu, I I, uh, uh, I did wudu right after that. Meaning every time I broke my wudu, I I I, uh, I did it again, and I stayed. I mean muad al wudu. I stayed on wudu all the time. Meaning I'm staying on wudu. Every time you break it, you go and do it again. And this uh, has a lot of other barakah and blessings that are mentioned in other hadith that. You get a lot of rewards and uh, a lot of Allah Ta'ala is pleased with this person who does this. So uh, uh, Bilal al said that every time I break my wudu, I go and do wudu again. وَلَا تَوَدَّتُ إِلَّا رَأَيْتُ أَنَّ لِلَّهِ عَلَيَّ رَكَتَيْنِ أُصَلِّهُمَا That every time I did wudu, then I would go and I would know, I would think that Allah Ta'ala, I should do two rakat nafal, two rakat tahiyyat with wudu for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So I would go and pray these two rakat. <coughs> 
قال صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him بها meaning that is the deed that is the deed that has made you made me hear your خشخشة meaning your footsteps in Jannah. One other thing, like I mentioned in the beginning, is that it is not necessary for someone to do big deeds. Like the, just now I just mentioned, Bilal al Taran, this is a small deed, just doing two rakah after a prayer, that's not, uh, after doing wudu, that's not a big deed, that's not something that's really hard to do. And the thing is, like I said, to become a friend of Allah, it is not necessary to do be uh, doing one of the big uh, reward, the big reward, the big uh, deeds. But if we stay on the fara'id alone, and we stay away from the muharramat, we will, inshallah, become one of the friends of Allah Ta'ala. Uh, there's a, a hadith uh, re related in the Sahihain, in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, that uh, an Anas ibn Malik Anas ibn Malik said, Nuhina an nas'ala Rasulullah an shay. That we were prohibited from asking the Prophet many questions. They were, uh, because they, some people would come and ask uh, unnecessary questions. So the ayat of Allah, Allah Ta'ala revealed the ayat telling them, do not ask many questions, do not ask unnecessary questions. So the Sahaba would remain quiet in the company of Rasulullah Sallallahu and they would not ask too many questions. So he said then what we would do is we would love for some Ahlul Badiya, meaning one of the Badu. You guys probably heard of Badu, the desert dwellers. And we would wait for one of them to come and the one who's intelligent, intelligent dwell, uh, desert dweller, dweller to come out and he would ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some question and we would listen to it and we would listen to answer and we would build our knowledge. So he said, one day an Arabi came, a Bedouin came. So this Bedouin came out and he says to Rasulullah and he actually just to tell you how, uh, how rough the, the life of the Bedouins and how rough they were. He did not say, Ya Rasulullah or anything. He was, Ya Muhammad, oh Muhammad. And this is disrespect to call someone, but especially at that level. Like for example, if you go up to President Obama right now, you go, uh, you know, oh Barack. <laughs> or you go Ob Obama or these kind of things. This is like disrespectful. He has a nice, you know, position. He's a high position. You should respect that. And you can say President Obama, President like this. You cannot call someone by his name. So he came. He said, Ya Muhammad, sorry, He called out that one of your Rasul, meaning one of the uh, messengers you sent out to our city or our our uh, our area where we were staying. He came and he told us that there are fara'id and that we have to pray five times a day. We have to give zakat from our amwal, from our wealth. We have to do uh, shah, uh, you know, the hajj if we are able to, and different uh, fara'id. Is this true? Did, did, is this true? So he said salaqah, that he has, he has told the truth. So after this whole conversation, he got up and he, saw, he said, he goes, Wallahi, or he said, Walladhi ba'athaka bil haqq, that I swear by the one who has sent you with the truth. La azidu an hadha wa la ankusu minhu. That I will not add to this and I will not decrease from it. Meaning I will not add to the fara'id, the five times prayer, the psalm, you know, the, the, the not psalm, the psalm was not for that time, but the zakat and the hajj and these fara'id, I will not add to it and I will not decrease. Meaning I will do the fara'id and I will not do the nawaf, I will not do extra deeds. And I will stay away from the haramat. So Rasulullah said that when he turned around he left, he said, in sadaqah, and if he's telling the truth, then he will surely enter Jannah. And it comes in another hadith of the same, it's either the same situation or another Arabi, that the same situation came, and he got, when he got up, he said the same thing, that I swear that I will not add to this or decrease. And uh, Rasulullah said that, Man an ila, ila ahadin min ahadin jannah, that one of you, if one of you, it pleases one of you to look at someone who is from the Ahlul Jannah, from one of the people of paradise, fal yanzur ila hada. So look at this person. Meaning that he gave in the bushra in this dunya the glad tidings that he will be one of the people in Jannah. <clears throat> it comes in the Sahihain on Abi Hurairah al Zalan, Anna Arabian. So there's another uh, same thing happened. He came and he asked the same question and the same thing happened. I don't want to keep on uh, repeating and keep on lengthening it. But uh, example. One example I want to give is this Arabi, he was doing, he said, I'm going to just do the fara'id. I'm going to stick to the fara'id and I'm going to stay away from the muharramat. I'm going to stay away from the sins and sinning. And Rasulullah said, if 
he tells the truth, he will go to Jannah. And another wife that he is one of the people of Jannah. Right? So the example I want to give you is like here in this room. In this room, we have a furnace running and it's kind of hot in here. I'm, I'm wearing one of these tools, so I guess I'm kind of hot. But if we have, for example, you have two people. You have one person, he's in his house. He has the, full, the furnace running at 90 or 100, whatever the highest temperature you can set it at. He has it running full blast, but then on the other hand, he has his door open, or he has a window open. Okay, what's going to happen to this person? What do you think is going to happen? He's going to face to death, right? I mean that, and and also that furnace is going to break down. Okay, and then he's going to be in big trouble. So his his furnace is going to break down, and he's going to face to death. So either one of them is going to happen between, uh, before the other. So I don't know. He's going to become broke, and then face to death, or maybe he'll face to death, and then. Someone else will take the, the bill. But anyway, so uh, this person is like that. The other person, he seals up the windows with plastic. He closes the door, and if he's living in Detroit, he triple bolts the locks. <laughs> so, so he closes the doors, he locks it up, but he has no furnace. A lot of people don't have furnace, or they don't even have money to pay for the gas, so their furnace is off. They don't have gas, they can't uh, run the furnace. Now this person, the second one, does he have a better chance of surviving or does the first one? Second person, right? Even though he has no furnace, he has just his body heat and maybe one, you know, a pair of clothes on or, or some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, blanket or something. But he has the window sealed, he has the door bolted, he has no cold air coming in, and eventually he will. You know, he will, he will uh, last the night, he will not die. This person will not die. And many, if you go to Detroit, there's a lot of people doing this. So anyways, this is the example of the person who stays away from the Muhadramat. He continues to do the Faraid. Just stick to the Faraid. He sticks to the Faraid, but he stays away from the Muhadramat. He does not let the cold wind enter his home. He does not let the cold breeze enter his home. So what happens is he survives. Inshallah ta'ala, if we become, become one of those who sticks to the fara'id, just does the basics, the fara'id, what is fard on us, the obligatory actions, and stays away from the muhadramat, does not do the muhadramat, we will, inshallah, become one of the people of Jannah, just like Rasulullah told us about the Arabi. <clears throat> There's another story, actually, uh, inshallah, I got time. Uh, Abu Huraira al Taran, he narrates a story that one time they were sitting with the Prophet وسلم, and they were discussing things. And Rasulullah all of a sudden he got up without saying a word and he, uh, he, he went out. So they all thought maybe he went to, reveal, uh, to relieve himself or he went to do something. But he did not come back for a long time. Well, it was a lengthy time, he did not come back. So the Sahaba started getting worried. Like, what's going on? Is he, you know, uh, I hope the. You know, the, the enemy did not attack him, maybe they killed him, what's, maybe you know, something harm came to him. So they all dispersed to go and look for him. They went out to look for him. Abu Huraira was the one who found him first. He said that I was walking and I saw this, uh, this garden, which was wild. It had a, a wild uh, garden. And he looked for an entrance, he could not find an entrance. But then he saw a, a place where there was a stream. A stream was coming out, a small hole. And you know, you have to water, water the garden. So there was a stream coming out of this water, and there was a small hole. So he squeezed himself in, and he went inside that uh, garden. And in this hadith, it does not tell how Rasulullah got into the garden, we don't know. But anyways, Abu Harir he got in, and Rasulullah was sitting there, and he was sitting on, a, on the edge of a, of a well, of the mouth of the well. So he was sitting there, and Abu Harir came to him, and he asked him, he said, what happened? Was Ma like, why did you come here? What's going on? He said, he told him a story. He said, we were waiting and we thought that some harm came to you. So we all went out to search for you. And I was the one who found you first. So Rasulullah he, he gave him his na'lain, meaning his, his, uh, his, uh, his juta, you could say, or his slippers. He gave him his slippers and he, he said to him, go and give Bashara, go give glad tidings for anybody you find beyond, beyond this wall. That the one who says la ibn qal la ilaha illallah, the one who uh, believes in la ilaha illallah, al jannah, that he will go to jannah. So he went out and he went because the Prophet ordered him to do this. He went out and while he was going, guess who he met first? He met the <laughs> Umar bin Khattab. 
Umar bin Khattab the one who was, you know, he was a Muhammad, he was like a giant, a big guy. So he came and he goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, where are you going, Abu Huraira? Abu Huraira says that, uh, and, and he saw the shoes in his hand, so he goes, what's this, what are you doing with these shoes and where are you going? So he told him, he said that Rasulullah has ordered me to go and tell the people that whoever says La ilaha illallah, the one who believes in Allah, he will go to paradise. So right then, he hits him on the chest. He punches him on the chest really hard, and it comes in the hadith that Sakatu ala isti that I fell down on my buttocks. I fell down back. I fell down because of the stress. And he, Abu Huraira was a skinny guy. He was a small guy, a skinny guy. And when he hit him, imagine Umar bin Khattab hitting someone. He fell back really hard. And actually, it says in there he started to cry. He started to cry because of pain in his chest and how hard he fell down. Abu Huraira started to cry. He got up and then he says to Umar, he says, I, I swear to Allah, I will go back and tell the Prophet what you just did to me. I'm going to go and complain to the Prophet So he went and Umar bin Khattab was following behind him. He's following behind him. Once they got into the, uh, to the garden, he, the Prophet saw him crying. So he said, what's going on? You know, what's going on? And then Umar came in and he told him what happened. He asked him, why did you, why did you hit him? Why did you hit him like this? So he said that, that this skull, this thing that you ordered him with, if he goes... If he goes and tells the people this, then they will start yattakilu, meaning that they will start becoming relaxed. They will stop, uh, you know, stop doing the nawafil, stop doing the uh, extra acts, and they will just be relaxed. Yeah, I'm going to get to Jannah anyways, so I don't need to do these good deeds. So Rasulullah said, "Yes, don't, don't, uh, don't spread this word right now." And then later on, he gave the hukum. When the iman was strong, when the sahaba was strong, they were able to. Um, hear this and take this, he gave them this order to go and spread this. So this tells us that the one who believes in Allah Ta'ala, the one who does the fara'id, what's obligatory on us, and even if he doesn't do the extra actions, but he stays away from the Muharramat, he will enter Jannah. He will enter Jannah, inshaAllah, and become one of those who are loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, someone might ask, how can you, you know, you're talking about a wali, you're talking about a friend of Allah, how can I become a wali? How can I become a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It comes in one of the, uh, actually in uh, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah relates his hadith in Sahih uh, Bukhari, عن أبي هريرة أنت عن قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and this is a hadith Qudsi meaning that this is the Prophet relating this about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, إن الله تعالى قال that where Allah ta'ala says or he said مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتَهُ بِالْحَرْبِ That I, that Allah SWT says that the one who shows animosity, who shows enmity or hatred towards a friend of mine, then I have declared war on him. I have declared war on him. <clears throat> For example, in this dunya, we see that there are superpowers and then there's third world countries and you know like this. So now if a third world country or someone goes and picks on a friend of a superpower, what's going to happen? They're going to come up there and they're going to be like, well, you know, why are you picking on him? And they're going to come and destroy that country and they'll, t they'll annihilate them. So the same thing that we have the power of Allah, Allah's power, which is infinite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah will be on our side if we become the wali of Allah. And Allah ta'ala explains after this, how will the person become the wali? How will he become a friend of Allah? Allah SWT says, ma, wa ma taqarraba ila, ilayya abdi. And the person, the, the slave of mine, does not come closer to me. Except with the things that I have made fard on him. Except with the actions that I have made obligatory on him. He does not continue becoming closer to me except with these actions. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أَحِبَّهُ and then Allah SWT says that, and he does not continue to become closer to me with uh, the nawaf, meaning with the extra actions, until I love this person, until I come to love this person. <clears throat> when I love this person, I become his hearing with which, with which he hears. I become his hearing with which he is. May not meaning Allah Ta'ala, he becomes the hearing, but meaning that Allah Ta'ala becomes the tawfiq, he gives him the tawfiq, and he guides him towards hearing that 
which is halal and staying away from the that which is haram, meaning music and, uh, and these kind of actions. He stays away from doing these kind of actions. وَبَصَرَهُ أَلَّذِي يَبْصُرُ بِهِ I become his, his, uh, his eyesight with which he, uh, he, with which he, with which he sees. I become his eyesight with which he sees, meaning that he gives him the tawfiq to stay away from watching haram and looking at haram, and then instead he starts to go towards the masjid and looking at halal things. And I become his hand with which he grabs, meaning that instead of grabbing from people's haq, from their haku, stealing from people, stealing from the people's uh, the rights of the people, he becomes one of those who gives out his hand in the infaq to the people. He gives out and spreads the the spreads the zakat, spreads the sadaqah, spreads the khayr, the good to the people. <coughs> and I become rijlahu allati yamshi biha. And I become his leg with which he walks. Me, instead of walking to the bar, instead of walking to the haram things, he walks towards the good things. He walks towards the masjid, talk, walks towards these kind of gatherings, the gatherings of the dhikr Allah, meaning where the dhikr of Allah is taking place. Actually, uh, I, I, I was talk, uh, talking to my community back home in, uh, in uh, Bloomington. We, if you guys come inshallah, visit us one sometime. Uh, we have a youth group there too, inshallah, so maybe you guys can come visit us sometime. But we have a road, and actually, we, right before you turn into the masjid, on the opposite, right on that small road, right across from the masjid, we have a bar. The Gill Street Bar, I think it's called, or something. Right across from the masjid, and then on the other side, we have the masjid. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has given the Muslims the tawfiq, that when we, every time I go and I pass, I get this in my mind. Allah Ta'ala has given us the tawfiq that instead of turning towards the bar, Alhamdulillah, we turn towards the masjid. We turn towards the masjid, we turn towards the dhikr of Allah, and we go, I'm sorry, I'm not pointing towards you as being but I'm just saying, but uh, we turn towards the masjid, and we go towards the dhikr and the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the things, this is one of the signs of being the friend of Allah, that Allah Ta'ala gives us tawfiq, and we stay away from the muharramat, and we go towards the halal actions, and we go and we increase in uh, these actions. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in uh, Surah Maryam, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, Inna al-lazina amanu wa amilu salihat, sayaj'alu lahum al-rahman wudda. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, one, the ones who believe and do good actions, Allah ta'ala uh, places for them wud. Wud is love. Meaning love and, and uh, respect and, and uh, appreciation and kabul for them in this earth. So we learned from one of the hadith actually that when Allah Ta'ala loves a person, that not only is it restricted to Allah Ta'ala Himself, but the whole universe starts to love this person. And it comes in, uh, in, in uh, Imam Tirmidhi, he, he uh, narrates in, in his book, and actually in other books too, is related this hadith. And Sa'ad bin Tala, I mean Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas bin Tala, and Abi Hurairah bin Tala, they are narrated that Anna Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا نَادَى جِبْرِيلٍ إِنِّي قَدْ أَحْبَبْتُ فَلَانًا فَأَحِبَّهُ That when Allah Ta'ala loves a person, He calls Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, and He says to Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, that I love so and so, so you love him. So you go ahead and you love him. Then after that, Jibreel alayhi wa sallam goes, Wanada Fisama, he goes and calls out to the to the earth and to the heavens and to the earth that verily Allah Ta'ala has loved so and so, so you love so and so. You go and you love so and so. Then the Nazala Qubul, meaning the acceptance and the love comes into the earth. And this is the thing, like I mentioned in the beginning. Ida dhukir Allah, Ida Ru Dukir Allah. That when they are seen or when they are looked at, then you remember Allah Ta'ala automatically. This is one of the signs. When Allah Ta'ala loves someone, then the kubur, the love of that person descends on the earth. And then even the, not only the insan, and not only the jinn, but even the rocks begin to love this person. Even the stones, the trees, they become, begin to love this person. And we see in many hadith that the Prophet himself, that when he used to walk in the streets of Bakka Makarama, the, the rocks and the trees would say salam to him. They would love to say salam to the Prophet so this is the the hub, the love and the wood that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He sends down to this earth for those of the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, the ones who are close to Allah Taala. 
And I just want to end uh, with, the, with the last ayah that I recited. لا تبديل لكلمات الله ذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العظيم That there is no change, meaning that the, the, the kalimat, the, the words of Allah, the promises of Allah Ta'ala will never change. When Allah Ta'ala promises something, when He says something, He will never, He never goes back on His word. It says that Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَسْبَقُوا قَوْلًا مِنْ مِنَ اللَّهِ That who is, who is more truthful in saying than Allah Ta'ala? When Allah Ta'ala says something, He is meaning it. He it does not go back on His word. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And what is this, pun, what is this, uh, what is this, um, uh, this bushra, what is this glad tidings that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has promised? This is Jannah. This is Jannah for those who stay away from the Muharramat and they go towards the good deeds. These, this is Jannah that Allah Ta'ala has, uh, has promised for us. And Allah Ta'ala will give us Jannah, inshallah Ta'ala. So we should, inshallah Ta'ala, look to our lives. And we do not, like I said, we do not go to the big, start with the small actions. Start with the small action and slowly build upon these. You know, for start with the fara'id, then you slowly, slowly build on these until you get to the big actions, inshallah ta'ala. And we will become the awliya of Allah subhanahu uh, There's one uh, example I'd like to give is someone who is begging in the street. Someone who is, you know, we see a lot of beggars in Detroit, so uh, that's why I just see this. I was, uh, actually I live in a suburb of Detroit, so we don't have any beggars there, but but I used to uh, study in Detroit, in Wayne State University, and there was lots of uh, people in the street, so that's why I like to give these kind of examples. But anyway, so a beggar in the street, and those, uh, those people who do not have enough food to even last a day or to sp spend the night, now that person, who, has, who here has heard of Shatila Bakery? Okay, the Michiganders, right? The Michiganders, they know about Shatila Bakery. It's, it's like world renowned now. So a beggar in, from Detroit, the ones from Detroit, a beggar of Detroit. Have you ever seen a beggar of Detroit standing in line in Shatila trying to buy some sweets? If he doesn't have money to pay for food, a decent meal to get through and stuff, he would never even think about getting a sweet. So we have to stay, get to the main course, get to the, uh, the fard, get to the obligatory actions, and then we build upon it and we can eat the sweets after we have the main course, inshallah ta'ala. So may Allah give us the tawfiq to act on what we heard today and inshallah ta'ala increase, increase until we become one of the friends of Allah and become beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, rabbil ishati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-musaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah, I think we have some time left. We can do some question and answers. Uh, yes. Salaam alayhi wa sallam, just said, Which one? Last Arabic sentence just said, can you please translate? Oh, uh, this is a dua, actually, when, when you get up from a majlis, when you get up from a gathering, actually it comes in a hadith that, uh, that a person on the Day of Judgment and in the, in the, even in Jannah, when we get to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala, that we will still have regret for these moments of the majlis when we are sitting with our friends, with our relatives, and, and we are talking about, you know, um, I don't know what people talk about nowadays, but talking about basketball, talking about football, these kind of things. So if we talk about these, but we do not mention Allah Ta'ala, we do not mention Rasulullah we do not talk about Islam in these gatherings, then we will have regret for these gatherings. But that's not meaning that we cannot talk about these things. But the thing is, we should always relate, go back to Allah and Rasulullah in all our things. So if you're talking about football, you're talking about basketball, you're talking about uh, baking, <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. But, uh, so, I, I'm sorry, but, but you guys are talking about college, you guys are talking about classes, you guys are talking about these kind of things, so I'm just joking. Okay? Anyway, so, so when you guys are talking about these things, uh, when you guys are talking about these things, if we do not mention Allah and Rasulullah in these gatherings, then we should we should uh, end our gathering by mentioning, and this is the dua that I just mentioned, just like for asking the question. But what the dua is, Subhana Rabbika, meaning glory be to you, O Allah, uh, O oh my, oh my Lord, Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun, the one of Izzat, the Lord of Izzat, the Lord of respect and honor, Amma Yasifun, from what they associate or what they describe, from what they say, meaning, from what all the, the, the kuffar they say, you know, he has a son of, uh, son, 
and some say he has daughters, some say this, some that, whatever they say. So Allah is wa salamu and ala al and uh, and peace and blessings be on the Mursaleen, on the prophets and the messenger. Uh, and uh, and the, the praise, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Bloomington, Indiana? No, Illinois, Illinois. Yeah. You can go pause there, Indiana. Someone was saying they're going to go to Indiana, I think, for volumes. Oh, you're thinking. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Illinois. I think we have ISU over there. Illinois, Illinois State. Any other sisters? You guys have a question? Top crowd. Beer. 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 Beer.